places to go and people to see. If you're having a few drinks, be sure to plan ahead and get home safely. We don't want to pick you up. Drinking drivers risk injuries to themselves and others and take chances with their license, their jobs, and their future. Remember what's at stake and choose your ride, whether you're the driver, the passenger, or the party host. Thanks for supporting Sober Driving. I hope we never meet. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's your boy DC, Thursday night host of Rogers Out of the Fog. Right, you kind of got to make your own fun. Yeah. Which was a transition for me right. going into the morning show There's here. crowd. Keep doing the amazing work, will you? Um, they're learning about how to hire people. 20 years of local matter, so join me every Thursday night and see what's going on in the fog. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back to Gale Force Winds Season 2 on Rogers TV, where we explore the journeys of interesting people in and around Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada, and the rest of the world. Welcome back to Gale Force Winds on Rogers TV. My name is Jerry Carew. The first 50 minutes of tonight's episode is with the five men who paint. They traveled the island painting outside for two weeks in May, and then they spent a couple of days in St. John's painting with local painter Peter Lewis. The last eight minutes of tonight's episode is myself and my business partner, Alan Dale, in Crete. We were hired by the Royal Canadian Navy to go and talk to sailors, and we were aboard HMCS Montreal. At the time, we couldn't reveal who we were working for, so this eight-minute chat is us in the Venetian Harbor having a chat about our experience. Hope you enjoy it. Well, folks, here we are on Gale Force Winds. We're on location on, I believe it's called Tessier Place. And I'm really, really excited because the last time that uh, you would have seen uh, these gentlemen, the men who paint, we were on Zoom. Uh, they've been extremely busy and I'm sitting here right now with Roger Trache. Roger, could you go just go ahead and introduce yourself and then we're gonna have a little chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm Roger Trache, I'm from Saskatoon. Uh, I used to be a university prof with the ITEP program in Saskatoon, College of Ed. And uh, along the way I got invited to go up to Alaska and I worked up there for about seven years. Uh, so there's been other stuff. I tell my kids I don't know what I'll be when I grow up. Well, it's funny, uh, just as an aside, in getting set up for this, I spent, you know, 10 minutes explaining my setup and what I was doing to Roger, only to find out his background is in television, and uh, <laughs> he was very patient with me, and I've done that before. That's another story. So, Roger, um, how many days now have you been on the, on the rock, let's say? We've been on the rock uh, since last uh, Tuesday. Last Tuesday, yeah, you started in. Well, you landed in St. John's, and then you drove all the way to Gross Morn, I think. Gross Morn, yeah. And I have trouble remembering all the names of the places. Uh, we went to a couple of communities uh, south of there. Um, it's, it's been very interesting uh, looking at the uh, the fishermen towns and talking to the fishermen people. Um, we're in uh, St. John's right now, which is uh, back to where we landed it. Yes, and you're in the, kind of the center of the city um, with Peter Lewis, and we're up on a bluff that I've actually never seen before. A uh, bit of a challenge here today. Can't really see it from the camera angle we got, but a uh, little bit of fog rolled in. Yes, things have been uh, gradually revealing themselves, and I'm hopeful. <laughs> Uh, Roger, you know, you've got a very storied career, um, you've been a lot of places, you've been in Alaska, uh, you know, what, 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 what's some highlights uh, in this particular trip for the men who paint, and for you particularly? Um, it's for me, it's, uh, I, I've, I was working in Fort McMurray with uh, a lot of the people from uh, Newfoundland, and uh, we had a, a group that performed on Friday nights and Saturdays. At just a, at just a Fridays and Saturdays? A local cafe 
yeah. sponsored these shows, and uh, of course I just had to go and attend. Um, so anyway, it is great to, to get here, and I think the last uh, possible chance I had, I was in Eskasoni in, in Nova Scotia, and uh, I thought I'd take a run across over to Newfoundland. And I went to the boat uh, landing and uh, took a look at my, my watch and did a quick calculation, decided I couldn't do this turnaround. So I'm glad to be here now. If it makes you feel any better, the majority of people I've worked with in various industries have that same uh, mistake. It's a pretty geographically dispersed uh, distance between one point to the other. Um, so you've been cowhead, you went to Twillingate. Did you get to see an iceberg by chance? Yes. Yeah? Quite a few. Is that right? Yeah, and these guys that I'm painting with, they, uh, they went iceberg mad. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's iceberg after iceberg after iceberg. After iceberg. Yeah. Uh, th they did a good job of painting the icebergs. Mine aren't quite as good as I wanted them to be. Yeah. But uh, I'll get better. There's something that I'm impressed with, the fact that you're in St. John's with an umbrella fully extended. Normally, you'd be like Mary Poppins and be 100 feet in the air. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, in the setup that you have here, I would imagine wind can be very problematic. It was shaking things up a bit, and uh, Paul, the, the, the uh, local uh, Newfoundlander contact, came over and equipped it all for me. Well, Roger, thank you very much for coming to Newfoundland. Thank you very much for taking the time uh, to paint this beautiful landscape that we call home. Uh, we're very, very, very grateful that uh, the five men who paint have taken their time to come and do this. So thank you very much. I'm so glad that uh, we got to do this, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, folks, here we are back on Gale Force Winds. We're with the men who paint. We're particularly, we're with someone right now. Uh, we just interviewed his father, uh, Roger. This is Paul. Paul, just uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Paul Charse. Um, I have done lots of things throughout my life. I've worked at the university for a number of years, uh, taught at the university, um, ran a campus that was based on arts and ecology and then opened up an art supply store about 10 years ago and have been running that ever since and of course painting every opportunity I get. Well I can tell you this I've been so excited to actually you know meet you guys in person and uh, I've been pretty busy myself this week hadn't had an opportunity to get out uh, you've gone from the west coast Newfoundland here you are in beautiful St. John's I'll stand out of the picture so that everyone can see the beautiful view that's behind the fog. Got a little soupy this morning so we got out here and we were able to kind of lay out the rough area and then uh, we're working off a few reference photos and making sure that we're getting things fairly accurate but now we're kind of in the process of making things up as we go along because something has to work within the within the work. So what we're looking at here is what you started at 8.30 this morning, would that be around Roughly the time? Roughly 9 o'clock, yeah. So this, as you can see, folks, this is a beautiful view of the Narrows, which is actually what you were looking and at what before I was the looking, fog yeah, rolled yeah, in, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is a very common uh, issue, as I've said to you, with uh, Newfoundland. When it comes to, you know, places that you've been and, uh, you know, what would you suggest, what would you say Newfoundland has been for you in terms of uh, an experience? There's a number of things. Um, first of all, I want to mention the people. The people are amazing. Uh, everywhere we go, we're welcomed, we're treated like, you know, just like we are in Saskatchewan, really, for the most part. And a lot of the, uh, the people here are very accommodating for whatever we might need. But the diversity in topography, the diversity in ecosystems, the diversity of things to paint, things to see, is quite astonishing. Yeah. You know, we've gone all the way from, from barren landscapes of rocks to seashores to small towns and Trout River and, you know, we've been all over the place and we've seen so many different things that really it would take, well, probably six months to do it properly. We're here only two weeks, so we've got a very short time. Yeah. 
Well, I can tell you, you know, I've had the opportunity being in the Navy to travel the world, travel not the world, but, you know, Canada. What I want to say to you is that I, I, I love this country, and I can sense from the five of you that you do as well. It's an incredible place we live, isn't it? Yeah, we're, you know? we're a very fortunate few that get to live in Canada. I mean, we're from the prairies. We have a... You know, the shield stretches across the top of our province. We come out to the east coast, we come out to Newfoundland, we get to see the, the beautiful landscape here, we get to go out to the west coast, we've been up to the Arctic. I mean, we've been all over Canada and it just never ceases to amaze us how beautiful it is. Well, Paul, I can say this, that uh, we're, we're privileged to have you in this province, privileged to have you painting the beauty that this place we're surrounded by. One thing I will tell you, though, if uh, if I had known that you were going to wear Philadelphia Flyers gloves, <laughs> I don't think we would let you in the province. But, uh, you know, we'll let you, we'll let that go. This well, time. what happened was I rolled into St. John's. Yeah. I had to get something for my hands. Yeah. And and these were only two dollars. <laughs> so, so are you a Philadelphia I fan? I am not a Philadelphia fan. Just so everybody knows, <laughs> absolutely not. It, but uh, if you're going to put paint on them, <laughs> may as well be Philadelphia. Now that's a good. You know what? I was in um, Nova Scotia one time, and I went in to visit this guy for some advertising, and he had a Montreal Canadiens <laughs> mat. Anyway, I'll go in there. I said, "Oh, it's nice. You're a Canadiens fan." Absolutely not. He said, "Did you wipe your feet in the logo?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Thank for you very. Thank you very much for being here. All right, thank you. Well, folks, we're back. We're with uh, the third of five men who paint. We do have a sixth here today, which we'll get to in a second. Um, Cam Forrester, just say hello to uh, the Gale Force Winds audience and tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm uh, Cam Forrester. I am a full-time artist. After 32 years in the golf and club industry, being a club manager and golf pro, I gave that up so that I could paint full-time. Now, if my business partner was here, he would literally probably put tape across my mouth because the moment I hear the word golf, I go off on tangents. But anyway, <laughs> that's fine. I won't do that today. Uh, we're here to talk about paint. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this. Oh, gosh. Um, back in 1970s, coming out of high school, my dad was an architect. want to be like dad, right? Or, or like your parents. So I uh, uh, started into architecture and uh, decided it wasn't for me. So I got out of that to play golf and uh, coach skiing. And and all that time that I was doing that, I kept on painting and drawing. And my uh, very first art show in 1988 in Maple Creek, Saskatchewan. And uh, in the early 90s, I started painting watercolor. And a gentleman that I was painting with said, if you want to be anything in art, you got to paint big and you have to paint in oil. So then I saw an advertisement one day that said uh, oil painting at the Emma Lake Landscape, which was close to home for me. So I went to the Kinderdine campus to learn about oil paint. And all I got stuck with was a bunch of friends. <laughs> <laughs> I use it that way. Yeah. yeah. I, li I like how you use the F word there. Um, <laughs> Cam, I, I, you know, I, I've said to to your colleagues, it's uh, it's quite a privilege for for us Newfoundlanders to have you here. I think there's an affinity for this land that you will hear, and if you've been with a person from Newfoundland, you probably understand. There's a call, there's a feeling of them to come back home. Part of it is the water on the on the on the beach, but it's also the topography. Like it's so unique. Um, what's your what's your take on on that? So yesterday we're painting Petty Harbor. And where we were set up, there's a group of young guys, maybe in their mid-20s or so. I'm just going to move you down here a little and, bit. And, yep. uh, yeah. And they kept going by us, and they are coming and going up along the docks. And, uh, and every time they would come around, they would slow down, and they would watch what we were doing. And then at one point, they rolled down the window, and the uh, young guy said, it's getting better every time I come by and see it. And I said, well, how can it not get better? Look what I'm getting to paint. <laughs> and the first thing he said is, it's my home. Yeah, yeah. That, that touch of it, it is, it's your yeah. home. They, they feel it and they give that off. It's fabulous. Well, you know, what I've gotten from my association you know, over the last couple of months, just talking to you guys on emails and that, you know, and I said it to, uh, to um, Paul, it's this country, you know, we are incredibly lucky to be in this country. And I sense from the five of you that you are proud Canadians. Would that be true? Yeah, yeah it is. It's not, it's, I won't get on this soapbox, but it's not, it's not a provincial border. No. Right? Everybody say, oh, well, this province is nicer than that province. It's, 
It's, it's Canada. Yeah. No, and, we, and we've been fortunate that we've seen it now from coast to coast and had the opportunity to paint and meet the people and, and they're just, we're all in our home. It's, it's fabulous. You know, someone said to me one time, uh, what are you doing for vacation? Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to Winnipeg. And they were saying, <laughs> Winnipeg? What are you going to Winnipeg for? I can tell you this, it was probably the most beautiful vacation that I've ever had. And there's assumptions about this place and that place, but you're right, we're all Canadians, one border, it's just an incredible place to be born, yeah. you know? And every place, even Winnipeg, someone's home. Yeah. And they're proud of it. Why, yeah. would, why would anyone ever put down someone else's home? So here it is, Friday, uh, you're coming to the close of this. Uh, any last thoughts uh, for what you've been through over the last 10 days? I want to come back. Yeah. Yeah, that, but now I want to bring my family along and not not worry about my paints, but I want to bring my family out to show them what I've been able to see. Yeah. It's beautiful. Well, well I'm going to say this, you know, thanks again. Uh, what I know of what you have all done is uh, is pretty intense. And uh, it's I know you love what you do, it's obvious, but I uh, just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for being a part of what we're doing. Well, folks, here we are. We're on a bluff that uh, I've never seen before. Sorry for repeating myself, but it's pretty cool to be in a place that you've you lived in a city your entire life. And that's kind of what's happening here. The men who paint are opening my mind. And we're here with Greg Hargarten. Is Hargarten. that That's right. Yeah, well, got it. Greg, just uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, where you came from. Uh, I My name's Greg Hargarten. I left university to play rock and roll with a rock band. Did that for uh, 15 years. Wow. And uh, when I turned 40, my wife bought me a gift to go to the Kenderdine campus, and I met all these guys. <laughs> and uh, really, I was into art before that, but that really sort of got me excited about painting. And yeah. then these guys have been inspirational. You know, when you get a group of guys that are all painting together, you learn so much from each other. Yeah. You know, and it's really been, it's been awesome. And we've been painting together now for 15 years, over 15 years, traveling all over Canada and uh, really learning art and about the country together. It's been fabulous. Well, it's interesting, you know, you say that these gents have inspired you. My brief association with you all is that you've inspired me as well. And that's important in life, you know? You need people around you that are gonna inspire you. Um, I have not paid attention to art, frankly. And I'm probably like the average Canadian, um, but I think what you're doing is something really interesting, you know? It's something special. Well, it's interesting, because uh, Mr. Van Rees really, um, he, ended up at the Kenderdine campus uh, because he taught at the U of S. And this was like the Kenderdine campus was an extension of that university. And um, he's a soil scientist and he was teaching classes up there and wandered through the, the uh, studio. And uh, he was suddenly struck like, oh, that looks like fun, that looks exciting. And well, he, he can tell you more, but he yeah. had no experience at painting at all before he kind of got hooked up with yeah. this group. So and now, uh, you know, he's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, I find it ironic, and I'm going to talk to him. I said this before, my joke's getting old, but a soil scientist comes to the rock. Um, always <laughs> funny. But, uh, Greg, so, yeah, you know, one of the challenges of Newfoundland is weather. Mm. And I, I kind of advise you guys about that. How have you been able to do this? You know, here we are today, we're looking at the Narrows. Yes, yeah. na folks, the Narrows yeah. is out there yeah, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> How has it been in terms of, you know, plein air painting outside and, and trying to get through the elements? You had a snowstorm in May, end of May, in the yeah, middle of the Yeah, almost in June in, <laughs> in Twillingate, yeah. Um, Canada all over is a bit of a challenge, but Newfoundland has been more of a challenge. I think we, for some reason, the sun's only out when we're traveling from one place to another and looking at all this fabulous landscape going, why can't we stop right now? Um, so it's been that, we've had a lot of rain. It's a lot colder here than we expected actually, you know? Yeah. Um, as prairie guys, we think, oh, we're pretty tough with uh, whatever, but uh, it's different here. It's humid, it's cold. Yeah. And I mean, for June, the trees are just, some of them don't even seem to have buds yet, you know? It's, um, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. It's a lot different than I expected, certainly. Uh, but Newfoundland has also been a lot different than I expected. The landscape here is so varied. You drive on that highway and it just, it changes every half hour. And you, it's like, you know, you're marshy areas. You got almost like badlands. Yeah. And it's just an amazing province. And uh, we 
every place we've stopped, we've had, uh, what, four different stops. So we were in Gross Morn and we were in, uh, you know, sort of the West Coast and then Twilling Gate and then now, now St. John's. We could paint two weeks or three weeks in each one of those places, you know, and we had like three days in each of them. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's important, I think, to uh, anyone living in a place is perspective from someone from not from there. And I, it's interesting to hear your perspective of that because I think what that'll do is make the people that listen to it that live here more grateful, you know? Yeah, you know, and it's funny because you don't really, yeah, you, you see it every day, you don't really, it just goes by. You've seen it since you were a kid. You don't really even, it doesn't register until you go away and then you come back, you know? You know, Saskatoon is in the middle of the prairies, you know, to draw a comparison. Like, we, I've been away a lot and it, Going yeah. up there, you just want to get out, yeah. almost, right? And then you go back and you start to realize how it's actually kind of a special place. Canada all over is yeah. very special. And uh, I can see growing up here, you would just take it for granted, maybe that the rest of the country looks like this, but it certainly does not, Yeah, you know? Um, you, you know, 15 years as a musician, that in and of itself probably is a six hour podcast that we could do. <laughs> um, did you have a chance to hear any of the local music while you've been here or have you been too busy? We have not. Yeah. Uh, well, our tour guide, Paul Joy, was, was uh, playing some Newfoundland songs. And my wife's from Belfast, so I'm quite familiar with the Irish traditional music. Right. And the Newfoundland music and the Irish music are kind of go hand in hand very, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of influence there. But, you know, now that we're in St. John's, Paul has promised me that we're going to go out and see, hear some music. And so, and we're here on the weekend, so I'm sure we will get to experience it. There's a lot of music happening here. Yeah. Uh, you know what, Greg? It's been a pleasure to talk to you. It's been a pleasure to get to know you and, and your colleagues. So thanks again for coming to Newfoundland and Thank doing you what for... you do. Keep doing it. Yeah. I'll be following you for many years to come. Right on. Well, you got to come out to the prairies now. I will. I've been there many times before, as you may know, uh, but I will look at it in a different light, and I have some more <laughs> friends. Well, yeah, phone us when you get out there. I will. Right on. Well, folks, here we are back on Gale Force Winds, and uh, I just made a joke that it's uh, the first time that I've actually interrupted people as they work. You continue to work, yeah, Peter, yeah, if you I want. Will, if, will, that's, yeah, yeah. if you can multitask like that. I'm not very good at multitasking. Okay, well, that. whatever you feel comfortable <laughs> doing. Um, here I am. I'm interrupting uh, one of St. John's finest painters, Peter Lewis. I don't know Peter. Uh, we were just talking. We went to the same school, but uh, Peter, you know, uh, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself? That'd be yeah. great. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, from St. John's. I've been here mo all my life pretty well, except for, for some years uh, when I was younger. Yeah. Yeah. Keep and, going. Uh, yeah, so. Come uh, over to this side. I, uh, I've been painting now for uh, about 20 years, I guess. I, I was a school teacher. Uh, phys ed teacher for uh, I had a full career as a teacher. You were a phys ed teacher. Phys ed teacher, yeah, Fantastic. yeah. So I'm uh, now uh, just enjoying my retirement from teaching. But I've been painting. Uh, I started painting halfway through my teaching career, so I was able to do, uh, to yep. do both. I was, I was fortunate there. Sorry, I'm yeah. very distracting here. I'm uh, yeah. trying to get a good angle. Um, yeah. That's fascinating, yeah, yeah phys ed yeah. teacher. And then, yeah. so what got you? You had always been painting a little bit, or? I, I got into painting uh, about, you know, uh, in my sort of very late 20s, when I was about 30, and I, I you know, I really, uh, I was exposed to it, and I, uh, I got addicted, really. I, I did courses, and I did uh, def deferred leave as a teacher. I did that uh, four times as a teacher, which enabled me to, to pursue uh, painting, and, uh, you know, try different mediums, and, uh, I've kind of uh, uh, fallen towards using oil, and, and uh, right now I'm uh, painting with a palette knife, which is uh, a bit different than uh, a brush, but... Uh, uh, just, yeah. just hold it up to the camera so people can see what you're painting with. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, palette knife. I yeah, noticed yeah. that, and I, 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 I remarked on it when I saw you. It's yeah. really neat how yeah, it yeah. works, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, so, it leaves a little bit of, I don't know what you would call, like, the paint is not flat. Well, I don't, I don't even know uh, how to describe kind of, it. It's uh, kind of uh, three-dimensional. Yeah. You get, you know, uh, the paint is coming out at you, so I'm, I'm sort of putting uh, the paint on a bit like uh, like paste, kind of. And yeah. the nice thing about it, you have a knife, and uh, you can wipe it off, and you have a clean uh, implement to work with, you know, unlike a brush. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, it's something I really enjoy, yeah, yeah. 
Well, it's obvious, and your work is incredible. Um, you know, we, the podcast that my partner and I created is is very, very focused on entrepreneurship and business. Yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about, you know, it's one thing to take some time off as a teacher. It's another yeah, thing yeah. to paint and then open a studio. Yes. Like, yeah, just yeah. talk a little bit about the inspiration and, and <clears throat> how, how it took you to to take that leap into the entrepreneurial art world? Well, you know, uh, being a painter, I was, I was very fortunate to have a, uh, a wife who was a business person. And uh, she ran her own business uh, downtown as a Xerox agency. Okay. So she had her building and uh, she had space. So it was a kind of an easy move to open a gallery there. And uh, and so we did. And uh, we've been there now probably 12 years. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know what amazes on, on me? Yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. You know what yeah. amazes me about entrepreneurs is that yeah. yeah, it was somewhat of an easy move. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, it's a tendency to gloss over the challenge and the, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. you must have butterflies in your stomach when yeah, you were doing yeah. this. Well, you know, I was, I was teaching, and I, yeah. I, ta I was teaching at the time. But my, my wife was a, a business person, so she was there, and she she was she helped helped run the gallery. She was really instrumental, really, to to me being a painter and uh, having a gallery. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. But well, tonight I know uh, this is, uh, and whenever you get into time on a podcast, it doesn't mean very much. But uh, we are going to go to your studio tonight, and I'll yeah, do some yeah. video there. Um, I'm excited to see what the men who paint have painted. Yeah. Yeah. What does it mean to you to have five painters come to Newfoundland like this? Like, I'm interested in your perspective on that. Yeah, well, I think it's just a, it's a real privilege to have a chance to paint with five wonderful painters from Saskatchewan, and uh, I just, you know, I just, but it's also great to be able to take a bit of time to show them St. John's, although they, although they've been here now quite a while, yeah. painting, or painting around the island. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, just fun. Yeah, yeah. So. When it comes to you know uh, your your studio, um, what what in terms of what are you know I don't know how many paintings would you have on display at any given time? Yeah, well we have about ten artists in our in our gallery, yeah. and we have uh, exhibitions uh, every once in a while, yeah. you know, er, maybe four or five a year. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, you know, the gallery is, is kind of you know, we have a, a, a person there. A, a, help by uh, running the gallery yeah. so uh, yeah that's fantastic yeah. Peter um, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you um, you have been an inspiration to many uh, that I know have oh, told you, me Jerry, that yeah. you have been uh, yeah. despite the fact this is the first time I've ever met you it's yeah, an absolute yeah. pleasure thank you for hosting these men who paint uh -huh. as they travel the island and uh, reside now in St. John's for a few days so yeah, look no, forward uh, to the tonight well I thank them for giving me the opportunity to, to meet them yeah. and uh, share a bit of time with them yeah, just, just great, yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Cheers. Well, folks, here we are back on Gale Force Winds. We're with a, our fifth and final men, man, men who paint, <laughs> man who paints. Man. We had uh, um, a, a guest. The, there is a sixth today in Peter Lewis, and I'm going to put these up in succession of how we did the interviews uh, just to keep the flow. But enough about that. Ken, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, no, my name is uh, Ken Van Rees. I'm a retired university professor. Um, I got into art late in my life, probably 15 years ago, when I decided to incorporate art into my science field courses. And uh, yeah, and I went to a, an art gallery with my mother, and I saw these landscape paintings because I'm not an art guy. And I thought, oh, this is kind of interesting. Maybe I could incorporate art into my science classes. And my next reaction was, no, you can't, because you don't know anything about art. <laughs> so I uh, talked to my uh, sister-in-law, who was a high school art teacher, and she said, try these things out. I'll write a couple rules out for you. Yeah. And I did with the class, and they loved it. So they would dig soil pits, look at vegetation, and then they would interpret the landscape through art. Would they paint it as well? Or? Well, in the early days, it was just oil pastels, but then I decided I need to learn something about art, and that's when I started taking painting classes the following year, and that's when I met the rest of these guys. That's fascinating, Ken. Yeah. I have a feeling your classes were a little bit popular, were they? Uh, they were, actually. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of fun, but students love going out in the field, and I think yeah. that's what I enjoy the most, is taking students outside. Ken, uh, you know, uh, 
one of the boys called me Lippy Lou, so I'm going to do a Lippy Lou thing here. Um, you know, most of the professors that I had would not take that ingenuity and like bringing that to the class. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, I love it. No, and I, to me that I love teaching. To yeah. me, that's the best part of the job being yeah. a professor, and uh, I just love taking students out, showing them the environment, and and I had that experience as a student as well. Asia. And I wanted to translate that into my own classes as well and take students out to the field. So, and they all appreciate it. I mean, you learn so much more when you're outside, experiential learning. It's just the way to go. So. In all of those classes and all of those students, is there one particular incident that stands out in your mind? Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> there, uh, we did the classic MLA Kennedine campus yep. and, the, and the university unfortunately shut it down, but I took the class, I still continue to take the class there, and we would do these special things where each person would have to pick out an artist and give their biography and talk about the artist. And I had a, a, a lady in the class stand up, a student, and uh, she says, my name is so-and-so, and I am the great-great-granddaughter of Ernest Kenderdine, who was the fellow who actually founded the camp. And it just blew me away wow. that here I was, having this student talk about her great-great-grandfather who was a famous artist in Saskatchewan and it was right there in my class. It was just phenomenal. It's amazing. Yeah, it was a special, special moment. Um, Ken, one of the things that I'm going to do is bring it back to the art. I realized I didn't talk. I, here we are with the men who paint. <laughs> I did touch on a little with, with Peter and the way he paints. Can you talk a little bit about your painting and, and how this started? I saw this <laughs> folks, as a blank a canvas. canvas. <laughs> what really, really astounds me now is how beautiful that is. Talk a little bit about the process, if you don't mind. Yeah, I'm, I started out as acrylics because it was just easier to work with for me, but uh, last year I made the decision to move over into oils, and I just liked that it was yummier. Just, and I love the idea of putting... Do you on... eat the paint? No, <laughs> no, I don't eat the paint, but because uh, Van Gogh did. <laughs> he didn't last did very long, did he? I so. didn't know that. <laughs> so, but no, it's uh, for me, it's just yummy you put it on thicker yeah, yeah. and it's just it buttery it's just kind of those feelings that you can't f do with uh, acrylic paints and so for me I just like to put it on thick not as thick as Peter and I would love to move to that to take a palette knife and just slap it on but I, I'm just not there yet so. yeah but well look you know I was looking at Peter and I struggle to put butter on my bread <laughs> so what he's doing is blowing me away uh, I, I see what you're saying though about you know the way it's got a little bit of raised paint yes. in that it's it's got like yes. Peter said a three dimension to oh, it. oh I know right? well his is certainly three dimensions yeah. and that's the kind of thing I like too is that you can layer it on and put more and more on. Acrylic paint, you can't do that unless you add yeah. mediums to it, but I, I just like the feeling of oils. I'm just gonna step aside and point out that, so the painting that we see here is actually the church that we see there. And uh, you know what is really cool about how you're doing this? There's a lot of telephone poles and wires and everything. <laughs> You've obviously seen through all them yeah, and, and all put the, people. the painting without that. Yeah, and that's, that's just part of learning too, eh? I mean, it's the experience and having these guys is really, really helpful too because you run into a problem and say, hey, how do I fix this? Yeah. How do I move forward? And it's been wonderful painting with these guys because they've been so encouraging to me because I was really the only guy that didn't know anything about painting when I started with these guys and they've been, been really, really supportive. So. Well, Ken, uh, I'm going to give you the last word okay. of, of the five men who paint and now the sixth who's the guest there, Peter Lewis. What? Uh, just give us, you know, your final thoughts. Uh, I never realized that Newfoundland would be so diverse in terms of its landscapes. And you've got everything from mountainous areas to plains to coastal regions to these fishing villages. Absolutely spectacular. And I don't know why I as a Canadian have avoided this province. And I am going to come back here with my family because I think it's just a fabulous place to go visit. And I'm really, really pleased with not only the landscapes, but just the people. So, so friendly here. So, so helpful. Well, I think, you know, uh, what you're experiencing here is, uh, you know, what? Five degrees in June. Yeah. And uh, you kind of got to laugh, don't you? No, you I mean, do. You have to. It's ridiculous. You got to make the best of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think yeah, the other thing that when you meet Newfoundlanders uh, away now, you realize there's a there's a longing to come back to this because there's there something is. special about the nature that we live in. Right? Absolutely. And I think it, it's really interesting. It's just the pride that the people in this province have for their province. Yeah. It's just it's just really neat to see. Well, on that note, uh, you know, we've 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 suffered a lot over the years, and I think there's a real resurgence uh, there's a confidence and there's uh, people like yourself coming to the province and giving us this feedback yeah. is really important so yeah. you know what 
but this is this Canadian country, this country we call Canada yeah. is amazing, isn't it? It and is amazing, it really is. And yeah. I'm glad now that I've gone from coast to coast and up to the Arctic, and so I've seen a lot of it. So it's been wonderful. Well, you've seen a lot more than most of the Canadians. That's Thank true. you very much for being here. We Thank appreciate you. it. You're welcome. Thank you very much for the interview. Well, folks, here we are. We are at, um, we're in test your place test in the your heart of St. John's, St. John's, Newfoundland. And I'm standing here with my childhood friend who moved away in 1991, would it be? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last video you and I made together was you leaving for the RCMP. That's right. You've had a storied career in the RCMP. Just, um, I, well, I'm not going to get you to tell your story. I'll tell it a little bit for you. This man grew up in St. John's. Actually, he grew up in Steamboat Crossing. That's right. Moved into St. John's and we became very good friends and it was at a tumultuous time in my life. My dad had just passed away and your family kind of took me under your wing. I probably ate more food in your mom and dad's house than I ate in my own. And uh, it was an absolute pleasure to have you as a friend growing up. And you've come back this year for a year. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing in St. John's and then we'll get into the men who paint. Okay, well, uh, about a year ago, my daughter Taryn and my other daughter Kira got together and they said, We'd like to, to go someplace uh, after school and COVID's done and they were looking at Europe and then they kind of decided to uh, change their, uh, their travels somewhere closer and they settled on St. John's because my parents are still here and they ended up coming to St. John's. So, but uh, along the way, around December, uh, it, the conversations changed and uh, my wife was involved in the conversation. So it was a family trip then all of a sudden and we were going to rent a place here for a year and we ended up uh, getting a place on Freshwater Road and it's been a great year. Um, we've, we've learned lots more about Newfoundland. I've learned more about Newfoundland this summer, this year, I guess, summer's coming up, uh, than I ever, ever knew about Newfoundland, traveling all these places with these guys. Uh, it's been a great experience with, for my family. Uh, the kids are all, they've, they've matured while they've been here. They've taken their work, work serious, their, their schools skills ter, uh, serious. They've, uh, my two daughters have been working in the city since last September. And uh, the boys, my twin boys have been going to Brother Ice School. And uh, we did leave one son back in Sask Saskatoon. He's going to the University of Saskatchewan. So he didn't come for the entire year, but he, he made it out here twice for holidays and brought some friends. And we've had a lot of friends come and visit us here. Uh, because we're here and we know a lot of people uh, in our travels with the RCMP of course. So um, how this came about was uh, my wife uh, Nicole, she's from Tisdale, Saskatchewan and uh, her uncle is right behind us here painting under the umbrella Roger Trotchy and her cousin his son Paul they're both from Saskatoon and so of course they're family and uh, they've been involved with the men who paint for uh, a long time, almost 20 years I think Paul started painting and uh, he was teaching at an off-campus uh, art camp, it was a, kind of an art experience camp and uh, he was teaching painting and, and, and uh, in different areas he was kind of cross, I heard him say cross-pollination because he was including science with art and other subjects and looking at those other subjects from an art perspective. And so you had a lot of uh, students go through that campus uh, up at Emma Lake and uh, that's where the, the men who paint kind of got to know each other because they were taking these uh, art courses with Paul, I believe. And uh, and then I always I was always at Paul, you you have to come and paint in Newfoundland. You, you'll love the scenery there. And they had already been to Ger Germany, they'd been to uh, Haida Gwaii over in BC, they'd been up to Ivavik in uh, the National Park up in uh, the Northwest uh, Territorial border. And uh, so they, they, he was excited about it, but I never took him seriously. And then one, one uh, day last year, we went to an art show of theirs in Saskatoon, and I put it to him again. I said, you know, I really think you should come to Newfoundland. We're there, I'll, uh, I'll drive you around and make arrangements for you. And before the exhibition had ended, he'd gone around and spoken to, to Ken Van Rees and, and Gray Hargarten and uh, Cam and uh, Roger, and they were, all of us were in a huddle by the uh, end of the exhibition talking about this trip and they were excited. And I had a feeling that they were gonna finally decide to come. And here they are. 
<laughs> well, I, I, wow, Paul, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you've had quite an interesting journey yourself. This in particular, though, has been exciting for me, and my little tiny part in it has been a lot of fun. Um, just listening to your stories, the pictures, uh, Paul had been texting me pictures, and I put a little video, some of you may have seen that video. What's amazing to me is the nooks and crannies that you've been in, to, to your point, you know more about this province now than I do, and you've been gone for 35 years, right? Yeah, and I've got a lot more to learn. Well, we it's a some... huge expanse, isn't it? It is, it's great. And, and you know what, I just wanna say, uh, I really appreciate uh, you know, the, the help that you've given these guys. Uh, you stepped up, you, yourself and Alan, with Gale Force Winds, and uh, had Zoom meetings with them, and, and were involved in some of the preparation, and and you've uh, made videos that you've posted on YouTube, and it's, it's just been tremendous. It's a, bi a, bi a big boost for uh, their trip here and as well of course uh, Peter, Peter Lewis Art Gallery. Peter's here painting today of course and you've interviewed him and and he was he, he's such a great host I mean uh, they've really been so good to uh, the men who paint and uh, we're really thankful for that and, and and even today inviting them out for a plein air painting I know time here on the in, in St. John's with the fog they've had a great time and it's been uh, it's it just capped off the trip you know like being able to come and paint with a fellow uh, artist, as you know, as uh, notable as Peter, he's a great artist. Uh, I love his work, and uh, it's just it just really sets the the whole uh, trip. You know, it's just brought it back to St. John's. We were, of course we were in Lark Harbor, Bottle Cove. We were in uh, Rocky Rocky Harbor. We rode at Norris Point, Woody Point. We went through the Tablelands. They got some beautiful paintings in Trout River. Are you making notes, Roger? You can't remember all these places, remember? <laughs> we took him. We took him up to the Arches Provincial Park, just north of Grossmorn. I mean, Grossmorn's amazing. Yeah. Uh, any painter in the world should be there. But uh, it was really great when we traveled to uh, Twilling Gate, and it was a rainy day on our trip up. Uh, actually, sorry, we had the sun going up, and then we got there, and it was kind of fogging in. But uh, we went around that first evening to find uh, icebergs, of course, and uh, we ended up in Merritt's Harbor with this beautiful gigantic iceberg at the end of the cove at the opening of the cove and uh, all of all of the men who paint painted there that evening and the sun came out which was just phenomenal and it's done it a few times the sun came out the in sun Newfoundland. came out in twilling gate and it just lit that iceberg right up and uh, these guys basically were uh, of course elated when they saw that because uh, as i've heard them say the artists chase the light <laughs> that, yeah. and uh, and you know it's just been incredible watching these guys paint. Uh, I've never really, uh, you know, been exposed to painting no. or art, and I really enjoyed watching the process. and And these guys are true painters. They get up in the morning, six o'clock. They go out and they, they're trying to get the sun coming up, and they're painting then. And then they're taking photographs when it's not sunny out, and and then uh, they paint all day and they pack their lunch. And some nights we got home nine thirty, ten o'clock in the dark. We're driving back to the. The, the place where we were staying, and I, I was—it was a lot of work. It's an incredible pace. It was, it? it was a fast pace. To be honest with you, you were texting me. I was getting tired <laughs> just from reading your texts. Well, <laughs> it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, and uh, I, I appreciate how much work yeah, they do and put into I their agree. into their artwork. You know, like it's incredible. I took pictures and video of all of them and, and sent it to you, of course, and and uh, Greg Hartner, and he's uh, he's going to put it together, and they put it on their site, Men Who Paint, as well. And uh, it's just, it's exciting to watch these guys go through the process and then the end product when you see it. Yeah. And all of these guys have a different style and I've just, I, I can't say that I have a favorite. I like, everybody has a unique style and they've all produced a piece of art at a certain place where they've all painted together and I'll go, okay, today, Cam's got this, he nailed it, like the lighthouse, I loved it. Yeah. And then the next day we're in Mary Harbor and Greg gets it, you know, and next day we're at Norris Point, Paul paints this Shea Cliff and it's amazing. It's it's like the group of seven paintings, you know, like it's amazing. And then we're, we're down by the icebergs, you know, and Roger does this uh, painting of Bond Bay, you know, with the houses in the hillside. The colors were beautiful. Everybody has a different perspective. That's what I've learned about art. You know, like you say, oh, he's a good artist, or she's a good artist, or he's not very good. Well, I've learned over the past time, everybody has their different styles, and they're all great artists. Yeah. And these five here, uh, there's a painting that I like 
from all of them. And so it's it's quite it's quite interesting. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Well, Paul, I, I will tell you this. Um, you know, you deserve a lot of credit. Um, I mean, the man who paint did a lot of the work. You certainly did a lot of the heavy lifting to make this happen. And for that, you know what? The province should be grateful. Um, you're a man who's spent a lot of time. And I'll tell you one thing about Paul Joy. People talk, my brother served in Afghanistan. That's an incredible thing. What this man standing in front of me has done with the RCMP, he served his country and he served it in a way that I know that I could never do. So, Paul, uh, you have deep respect for me for that. And uh, I, I feel proud of you and I'm glad that you are uh, you're here and, you know, helping revitalize the uh, economy of Newfoundland, <laughs> buying a house and furniture and having your family here is phenomenal. Well, thank I, you very much. Well, I appreciate that. And I just want to wish you all the luck in your new business, Scale Force Winds. I yeah. know how much work you put into it and I know it's 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 a love and a passion of your life and uh, you've worked hard all over those years in advertising and you're finally getting to do something that you really like and I wish you all the best in it yeah well I uh, thank you very much Paul uh, Gale Force winds came out of the pandemic so there's lots of things that the pandemic brought that weren't very good and uh, this one is Some good things. a lot of joy so yeah yep. uh, all the Paul best to you and joy Alan. all the best to you and Alan <laughs> yes thank you thanks Cheryl and hopefully we'll have a big crowd tonight. Yeah, I know, that's good. It's always good to start the show with a couple of souls. It is, for sure. All right. Good luck. Have fun with it. Yeah, thank you. It already is. It's looking great. <laughs> amazing this province is undersold in many ways in my opinion and keep it that way <laughs> the beauty that we've yeah. seen and we yeah. said it about three days into our trip we could spend two months here and not even touch the surface of the beauty of this province the changes in topography the ecosystems the diversity of people the diversity of environments and systems we went from barren rock covered land in the tablelands, you know, to these lush places around rivers, to uh, Grossmorn, and then out to Twillingate, which is another very diverse section. So we have loved our time here. And uh, we are so grateful that we've had this opportunity to actually come down here and do this. Um, of course, uh, St. Bonds, I've mentioned, but also Jerry Carew, uh, Gale Force Winds has been a huge help for us. Uh, with podcasts and those kinds of things. He came out and videoed us today when we we're all standing around drinking our coffee. I'm sure you guys will see it rather than <laughs> painting. We were drinking coffee, but we were painting. Uh, but we did go out with Peter this morning and, and had a go at, at uh, what's the name of the place? Tessie's Park. Yeah, Tessie's Park. Saw the white curtain of fog today. And then the white curtain of fog rolled in. So, you know, we're making stuff up as we go along, trying to, trying to be as accurate as possible. Where's Signal Hill, Peter? <laughs> okay, where's that tower? Exactly. It's right above that window there. All right. Good. Uh, Peter was great with us today. That was fantastic. Um, during this tour, the, one of the main reasons why we've come to Newfoundland 
is because one of your sons came home last year with, with my cousin, Nicole, and Paul Joy, uh, and their family is here. I don't know where Paul is. Oh, he's back there, yeah. So Paul came along with us for a week and toured us all the way up to Gross Morn, all the way up and down the coast, all the way up to Twin Gate, and then all the way back to St. John's. He took time out of his busy schedule, their busy schedule with their young family, and allowed us to come and do it. So thank you, Nicole and Paul, for allowing us to do that and bring us to Newfoundland. We do appreciate it. <laughs> Just, um, we hope you enjoy what you're seeing today. Uh, we did our best. Um, it's all about, for us, it's about a feeling and an emotion and being connected to the land. For us, that's very important. So when we get to a place, we want to soak it in. We want to meet the people. We want to see the beautiful vistas, but also feel the land in some ways. And in Newfoundland, you guys got that in space. So thank you very much for having the men who paint here. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions that I can make an answer up to? <laughs> Great. Any, any funny stories? Funny stories? I thought millions of them. <laughs> yeah, but uh, some of them I can't share. <laughs> no, it's always accommodations are always funny because we're, we're going from one spot to another. We basically live out of suitcases and backpacks. So when we're hiking anywhere into the bush or up the side of a hill or whatever it might be, we've got all our gear on the back. As plein air painters, Peter, you're very familiar with that. That's what we do and how we do it. And there's always foibles along the way of somebody who has to put garbage bags in their shoes because their shoes have gotten wet. So. I wasn't pointing at you, Dad, but you just brought attention to yourself. Um, but there's always. We did get a new, great new saying, though. We did? Yeah, you can't see it from the road. That's good enough. Yeah, you can't see it from the road. That's good enough. We got a lot of really interesting sayings, let me tell you. What was that guy's name from Fish uh, Trouble River? Oh, Crocker. Crocker. <laughs> if you have any problems with Tom Crocker, said Chuck. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but we had nothing but fun, and, and really, truly, the people, especially in the service industry where we had the most contact, have been fantastic. So thank you, Newfoundland. Yeah. All right. We know it's busy organizing a trade show. That's why we created the Gale Force Winds Content Creation Technique. Allow us to capture all the interviews and goings on at the trade show to make a splash for your event. Well, Jerry, here we are in the beautiful port city of, I can't say really, let's just say we're in the Mediterranean. Is that good? We're not allowed to say. Well, it's pretty easy to tell from the lighthouse in the background. Let's leave it. Okay. We'll reveal everything in the fullness of time. Okay. So here we are uh, after three days of very intense work uh, with a client who will reveal again in the fullness of time. And it'll make sense why we had to be kind of so uh, cryptic about it leading up to it. But uh, three full days, I think we were able to shoot 40 really inspirational podcast what did you think of it well first of all i mean you know day one we were pretty tired uh and it's it's a pretty grueling pace to be honest with you um trying to adjust with the jet lag and the different times and all that but again you're right it's uh, in conversation with these individuals who frankly are doing something special um, it's been uh, it's been a lot of uh, I guess fun but it's also been hard work right. and uh, you know it makes me reflect a lot on various things but uh, I think you know what what you and I are experiencing here is interesting to say the least and uh, I think our, our country will be proud yeah no 100% Jerry I mean shooting the podcast was a lot of fun or shooting the episodes yeah. was a lot of fun and uh, then today of course we started into the production end of it uh, and the production end of it is uh, as much work or more than the actual shooting of it shooting of it is the fun part for me you know, I love the conversation I know you do too uh, but you also really geek out on the production end and uh, watching you in action today produce the first video that was quite fun to watch tell me a little bit about where we had to get to to do that 
Well, one of the challenges is one thing to actually produce the video and, and save it in an HD format, and that, that can be a little technically challenging, but I, the biggest challenge is an internet connection, and a connection that allows HD video to go up. Yeah, yeah. Most connections, and not to bore everyone with technology, are really good in the download. The upload is, is not good, so our particular location where we're staying has been a little bit mediocre. So we found a place called, what was it called again? InSpot? InSpot uh, Internet Cafe. Yeah, Internet Cafe, and it was more of a gaming spot. It was 100% like, a gaming hub. Maybe yeah. 25 computers, everyone is maybe, what, 20, 21, and gaming. Yelling, hooping, right? hollering, and I had no idea what was on their screens. No. It was something I'd never seen before. How about you? Well, I sent a picture to my 18-year-old son who was really impressed with it. So well, they were all wired in, though, headsets going, and they were certainly engaged and let's just say we were a little bit out of place there weren't we a little bit but yeah. they were very accommodating uh, we were outside actually uh, initially on the kind of a I guess what a, like a, a table out yeah, on the yeah. street and then it rained here so I had to go in under the awning but uh, I tell you I tell everyone one thing that was really interesting we wanted a, a drum uh, sound at the beginning and the challenge with YouTube is that you can't just download copyrighted material our work could potentially be blocked so why don't you tell everyone what you came up with which yeah. I thought was a really ingenious right thing. so we went on kind of Google Maps found a music store uh, and then I walked over to the music store while uh, Jerry worked on producing uh, the video and I went over to the uh, it was about a kilometer away I walked over to the music store and uh, <clears throat> in the window right in the showroom window out on the street was a set of drums so I walked in and I asked uh, if I could have a set of drumsticks to pay the electronic drums that look quite beat up compared to the brand new set that was in the window and they gave me the uh, drumsticks and I went over and I played the electronic drums for a little bit but of course you can't hear those right so I snuck over to the actual drum set that was in the window of the store and I started to beat out the tune that we were looking for recording it at the same time and of course the staff freaked out because this was a brand new set of drums they were trying to sell and now I was marking them up quite badly but I got I got the audio tape and I made it back to the internet cafe and I think it sounds pretty good yeah well it worked out well because it gave me some time to work on that clip and then uh, when I got the audio put it in and all that so. I mean I don't think Neil Pert could have hit the rhythm like that. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he could have come close. But anyway, yeah. so we got the thing uploaded, and uh, and I think that we shared the first episode uh, with uh, the the group that we were working with. Just you know, a private link for them to have a look at, and already got some great feedback, Jerry, that they really like the work we've done. So there's 40 more coming, and I can't wait to unleash them in the next uh, few days. Yeah, and just for anyone who's been following Gale Force Winds, we're not going to place these on our regular uh, cadence in terms of a Tuesday evening or with numbers, you know, episode 107, 108, 109, none of that. It'll be on our YouTube channel where you will find them, and uh, when we're allowed to post them, uh, we will, I, I guess you go on our YouTube channel, and yeah. that's where you'll find them. We'll yeah, probably do some social media posts, but I don't think we'll do 40 because we'll inundate everybody. With we'll them, inundate right? everybody, yes, yeah, so you'll find them on Gale Force wins uh, for sure but anyway Jerry now uh, enough of the technical stuff this is your first trip to Europe ever what do you think well I think uh, you know when we were walking down the street last night and we came upon this um, fenced in area and when we read the poster um, it said that this site was 3000 BC it's one thing to go into the St. John's area and, you know, look at the Basilica, for example, which is, I don't know, 200 years old or whatever it is. I mean, I can't even grasp looking at some of the buildings and things, like just off in the distance uh, by Alan's head here, you know, there's some structures there that were built in 1320. The concept of that is hard to fathom, 700 years ago, yep. and it's still here. That was a good experience for you. This has been an amazing experience. You know, uh, it's it's a, a pleasure to be part of something that uh, we are doing something different, and uh, 
I, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed, frankly, with the experience. And the theme is the same, right? It's all about inspiration. It's all about a positive message. People we spoke to today are all about that as well. So we're really excited to unleash this next series uh, of podcasts uh, to the internet and to our audience. So thanks very much for your support today. Tune in to Gale Force Wins. We'd like to share the stories of people that are doing amazing things. Thank you for you for watching. Uh, I think tomorrow uh, we got a plan to drive around the countryside. Our client work is finished, so we'll do a little bit for ourselves and we'll see what kind of content we can come up with. I'm sure we'll find something. Thank you for tuning in to Gale Force Wins Season 2 on Rogers TV, where we focus on conversations with leaders, business owners, and change. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, 